In example three, we have information on the number of people who visited Utah Welcome Centers in 2011. We want to notice this data suggests that Utah sees, on average, a higher number of visitors in summer months than in non-summer months, with a 90% confidence level. So again, the first step, since our non-summer months data set and our summer months data set both have relatively small samples, less than 25, we need to look at using QQ plots. Uh, here we go. Look at using QQ plots to assess normality. Now, in this case, both of our samples have different sample sizes, so we'll have to construct some of these statements separately. So I want to go to the graph menu, select QQ plot, select both of those variables, and add my correlation statistic. So non-summer months has a correlation of 0 0.923. Summer months has a correlation of 1. So this is the first time we've seen a case like this. Um, this has to do in part with having a relatively small sample size. Also to do in part with the fact that um, any computer program has a, a certain round off point where if a number is incredibly close to something, it will just sort of force that up. So really, instead of thinking of this correlation as one, because it's not exactly a perfect fit with our straight line pattern, really what we have is a, is a correlation of point nine, 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 and that nine just kind of keeps repeating. But it's so close to one that the program is just sort of forced to round that up to one. So rather than thinking of that as a perfect correlation, we just want to think of that as something very close, very, very close to one in this case. So we need to calculate two different critical values. In this case, our first sample has a sample size of 9. So we'll get a critical value of a little over 0.91. And our second sample has a sample size of 3. So that critical value is going to be 0.878. So the QQ plot for non-summer months has a critical value, or uh, a correlation statistic. of 0 0.923, which is greater than that critical value of 0 0.912062, which is the critical value for our QQ plot. The QQ plot for summer months has a correlation statistic of 0 0.9999, kind of just repeating, which is greater than 0 0.87806, which is the critical value for the QQ plot. This means that both sample data sets come from normally distributed populations, and we can estimate means. So since we're estimating means, we'll again select stat, tsat, tstats, two sample with data. We'll select variable one, which is non-summer months, variable two, which is summer months, deselect pool variances, and then we'll change our confidence level to 90%. Clicking compute, we get a lower limit of negative 49,000 and upper limit of negative 28,000, a little more in each case. So the 90% confidence interval estimate for mu1 minus mu2 is in this case negative 49,332.979 to negative 28,539.021. All values in our confidence interval are negative, implying that mu1 is less than mu2. So since mu1 is our non-summer months, 
that means that this claim is supported. So yes, this data suggests that on average, Utah sees higher numbers of visitors in summer months than in non-summer months. Or if we were going to interpret that inequality more directly, we're saying that they see fewer visitors in non-summer months than they do in summer months. So we could flip that around either way. One is the direct translation of that inequality. One reflects what the original question was saying. But both get at the same idea. Yes, the data is suggesting that on average, there are more visitors in the summer. In example four, we have information on the top grossing films in two different genres from 1995 to 2012. Can we conclude that on average, adventure films and action films bring in the same amount of money? So are movies in these categories um, equivalent in bringing in um, box office gross? So we want to do this using a 90% confidence interval. Both of our data sets are too small. Uh, the sample size isn't large enough. So we need to look at constructing QQ plots. So our first data set, Adventure Movies, has a correlation of 0.934. Second data set has a correlation of 0.851. Both data sets have the same sample size, in this case 10. And we see that our correlation, our critical value for the QQ plot should be 0.917895. That means that our second data set has too small of a correlation. We're going to have to conclude that comes from a non-normal population. So what that means is we don't have to bother interpreting the adventure movie QQ plot. We just need to look at the action movie QQ plot. So the action movie QQ plot has a correlation statistic of 0 0.851, which is less than 0 0.917895, which is the critical value for the QQ plot. This means this sample data comes from a non-normal population. and we have to estimate medians. So we don't actually need to say anything about the adventure movie data set, because as soon as one of these data sets fails the conditions to estimate means, we have to estimate medians. Even though with the other data set, the conditions are met, the second data set fails those conditions, so we have to look at estimating medians. So in this case, we're looking at the 90% confidence interval estimate for M1 minus M2. So to construct that, we'll go to stat, non-parametrics, and Mann-Whitney. So the Mann-Whitney test is the test that we use or the procedure that we'll use for constructing a two sample estimate for medians. It more or less works the same as estimating means. We select the first data set, the second data set. We don't have to worry about unchecking the pooled variances, or um, the pooled option. And then we'll set our confidence level. In this case, we want 90%. So we get a lower limit and an upper limit. So again, the process is more or less the same. We're getting lower limits, upper limits. We interpret them the same way. We just need to know that we have to look at this estimate for medians instead of the estimate for means. So our estimate for M1 minus M2 is 45 to 175. And we're looking at, can we conclude that on average, adventure films and action films bring in the same amount of money? So all values in our confidence interval are greater than zero implying M1 is greater than M2, so no. We can't conclude 
that on average adventure and action films bring in the same amount of money because in this case it looks like based off this data we can see since M1 is the larger of those that adventure movies are bringing in on average more money than action films.